Hello, this is Dorothy Smith. I'm back again for the cutting part of Project One on Feels Like Home. And so what I'm going to do, this is not usually how I do things, but I'm going to cut all the pieces out for Project One. So you can see how each of the entire projects goes together. So on our instruction page, we will have on our, our cutting diagram, uh, for instance, there's a 1F, a 4A, a 1C, and a 3D. And so 1F means that it is from Project 1, and it goes into Position F. 4A means it's from Project 4 in Position A. So that's why I'm cutting all of the ones out first and then I'll cut for project two and then three and then four. Um, I made a couple of mistakes doing this so I'm thinking that probably the best thing in the long run and of course I don't get a second chance at cutting uh, but the best thing to do is all of your cuts at one time and set them aside in piles and then put your projects together according to your pile. So I am going by the instructions and uh, cutting each of the background and texture papers that I come to that have a part of a project one. So I went ahead and cut the pink flower and gray plaid background and now I'm cutting the black and white stripe that has the dotted pink background and uh, got the my rectangles for that those are going to be mats for the uh, some four by six pictures and I am cutting the leaf background with the whitewashed wood this is where I made a mistake that I'll show you later on um, which is why I say it's probably best to cut all of your in, all, all of your cuts at one time um, so anyway, but this is what I did, and I always have a fix, so I am not even going to worry about it. And believe me, in scrapbooking, there's always a fix. So you just don't have to get fixated on your mistakes, because you can fix your fixation mistakes. Okay, so here we go. Um, the wood and leaf background has many narrow strips um, that are like three-fourths of an inch, by 11 and 3 fourths of an inch by 10. And now I'm cutting the, uh, what is it? I think saffron papers. Yes, saffron cardstock. And uh, those are going also to be background mats for some 3 by 4 pictures. And also there's one large piece that is an 8.5 by 11. So that's going to be um, obviously the big mainstay for that particular page. There's going to be room for a 5 by 7 photo that um, goes on white. And so the saffron is a mat for some white card stock that is going to be uh, the background for the 5 by 7 photo. And uh, I don't normally like using white as a background, but you'll see why it works out beautifully because it's a wonderful backdrop for the silver embossing that's going to go on the white. So it's going to be gorgeous. So after the saffron comes the white cardstock, and that has some very uh, narrow pieces that are one quarter of an inch. And those are going to be used for journaling. And there's an eight and a quarter and ten by ten and three quarters page that gets cut. And that's what is the mat that goes on top of the eleven and a half by eight and a half saffron cardstock. So the little tiny journaling strips um, are going to be cut down to five and a half and seven and a half inches. 
So there's going to be one more piece that gets cut at four and a quarter by, no, four and a half by six and a half. And that's obviously a background for a four by six. And once again, you'll see why we're using the white as a background for a photo. There's my journaling strips. And uh, for some reason, I only had one piece of white cardstock uh, with my kit, which was strange. But I always have white cardstock around, so I didn't worry about it too much. So I'm trying to speed up the uh, cutting here because it's pretty boring if you've cut any kind of pieces of cardstock before. You kind of know. So there's project one. It uses the uh, charcoal gray hexagon background. So I'm going to pull all my pieces together. Okay, and now I'm going to pull out my background papers, which are the charcoal hexagon papers. And the backside is a really pretty kind of tile um, type background. That's gorgeous, isn't it? It looks like something you'd put on your backdrop for your kitchen. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut off that zip strip. And the zip strip has all sorts of really nice words that I will use later on um, as an accent on the pages. So I'm taking the zip strips off because this paper is 12 by 12 and a half with the zip strip. So removing the zip strip makes my papers 12 by 12. And uh, I have just prepared, prepared my background pages for project Okay, so I'm back again, and I've got all the pages sorted, the pieces sorted for Project 1 for Feels Like Home, the Deluxe Scrapbooking Kit. So I'm going to turn to the first layout on Project 1, and there I go. So it's always good to read your instructions, which is something I never do. I just go by the pictures. So the that saffron piece is going to be the backdrop for the white cardstock. And for the white cardstock, I'm going to use the stamp that was part of the deluxe scrapbooking kit. So I'm going to move all the little pieces out of the way. And I'm putting my little cushion down so I get a good impression uh, to make my first stamp. Now I am using Versamark which is uh, invisible kind of glue. They call it a Versamark ink but it, it's sort of a glue and uh, it is to uh, have the embossing powder stick to it. Now the only problem you have when you're doing invisible clear glue on white is kind of seeing where your impression ended up. And so um, you could just go ahead and use the glue and kind of use the glare that the glue gives off to kind of show you where you put your, your uh, impression. Or you could actually use a emboss a, a pigment, a very, very light gray pigment or even white pigment uh, to make your embossing impression. The pigment is sticky enough and it doesn't dry very quickly so you can see better where you're putting your image, your stamped image. So I'm using the Versamark. See it says Watermark Stamp Pad. And, uh, you know, I'm putting the glue on there, but you really won't be able to see it, is the bottom line. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and run it around the flowers, which is part of a, a wreath, a kind of a wreath image. And the first thing I'm going to do is run my static pad over where I'm going to put the stamped image. Now, the reason why you want to use the the uh, anti-static 
pad is you don't want the little embossing granules to stick to various parts of the white cardstock. Uh, you'll get just kind of a messy look from that. So I am, because I'm going to be putting an image opposite itself, uh, I want to measure. Um, normally, if it was just one image, you can put a fudge factor in one way or the other, and it doesn't really make much difference. But these are going to be directly across from each other. And so you really kind of want them to be uh, on the same level. Otherwise, it's going to show that it's uneven and it might look a little funny. It'll be distracting. So that's why I'm using uh, the ruler to kind of help me with my placement. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ink in quotations up my stamp pad again and get a lot of glue on my on my image. And then you know one of the really fun things to do in scrapbooking is heat embossing because you kind of start off with nothing and end up with something that is really, really so pretty to look at. You know, and people are going to, people that don't know anything about crafts and, and scrapbooking are going to go like, how did you do that? You know, wow, that's really something. So this is our new silver tinsel, sorry for the glare, silver tinsel embossing powder. So this is new to our catalog and uh, uh, gorgeous, just gorgeous. We've got silver and gold and uh, red and copper glitter embossing powders. So, oh my goodness, I'm probably going to do a lot more embossing, heat embossing than I normally have done in the past just because these powders are so beautiful. Um, they were especially pretty uh, for the Christmas scrapbook pages because the red tinsel, the glittery red was, is <laughs> lovely, just lovely. So um, I have this nice little tray that we used to carry and unfortunately we don't carry it anymore but I think you can find them um, at Joann's or you can get them online at Amazon and they're very inexpensive. Um, but, you know, I've been using mine for, uh, let me think, I think I've been uh, scrapbooking for, I don't know, maybe 15 years. And I've had this tray for probably, you know, 12 or 13 of those 15 years. So anyway, there's my uh, two images. And I'm not worried about the fact that the um, inner part of the wreath is not fully covered because that's going to be completely covered up by um, a mat. So I'm going to go ahead and put my top back on the embossing powders because we will be using them and I don't want my heater to <laughs> blow them all around the place. So I'm hoping, see how it's shiny, how the glitter shows. So I'm hoping that as I heat it, I'm getting awfully close there. I did kind of burn one of my pieces of paper when I when I was doing my embossing later on. Um, each one of these layouts. So there's two two-page layouts and two one-page layouts for this whole kit. Um, and you can see how it's getting shinier and shinier as it as the uh, little powders, the little granules melt. Um, but each layout has the silver embossing on it. So it's really making us use um, our heat embossing and to you know just use it more and that's one of the purposes of these deluxe kits is to make us use things to add texture and interest to our pages that maybe we just kind of set aside and don't do too much because oh I don't want to bring that out so this is kind of saying come on you know let's get off the bench here and oh see how pretty and shiny that's coming God, it's just so much fun to watch that melt happen so you see how pretty it is. So um, look at that. Oh, pretty. So anyway, um, it makes us uh, stretch out a little bit and learn and do more things. I mean, that's why I kind of, 
I wasn't really ready to use the texture paste, but if you all have seen my um, Christmas layout where I made my texture paste fireplace, oh my gosh, I had so much fun with that. I can't even tell you. So this kind of takes us out of our comfort zone and says, come on, you know, really, you can do this. It's easy, and I'll show you how to do it. And so that's what Close to My Heart is all about. It's let me show you how. And so I may burn a finger or two in the meantime, but that's, I'm showing you. I don't want to show you how to burn your finger. But um, it's showing us that we can do these things that are a little bit out of our comfort zone. So there we go. There's my saffron mat. And that's why we needed the white background uh, to show off our silver tinsel wreaths and uh, then I'll go ahead and put um, this is my to remind me that I need to get a 5x7 made uh, to go on that mat on that picture placement card and so see now you can see why it didn't make a difference that the inside of the wreath wasn't fully finished because it got covered up it'll get covered up by the picture and uh, need a little bit more Tombow in here. So if you get too close to the paper, the paper can get a little curve to it. So that's what's going on. You kind of have to back off a little bit more than I did. I was just trying to make the, the little pellets melt faster by getting too close, but you really can um, burn your paper. I Because I, one of my papers has kind of browned on the edge, but okay I hit it with an embellishment so I'm going through my Tombow right and left with all these bigger pieces but uh, anyway here's another Tombow so after I put the large centerpiece in place uh, then I'm going to um, I think I need to flip that over Do you, Dorothy? Wake up, wake up. Or I'm using, maybe I'm putting it at the top. Who knows? So anyway, I'm going to measure, which unfortunately is off screen there, which I didn't realize. So when you're doing these videos, there's a lot of stuff to watch out for, and somehow I didn't realize that I was off the screen at the bottom. So anyway, let me put this in place, and then the uh, strips at the top there will go along the bottom of the scrapbook page to just add interest and uh, more dimension. As you put in more layers, you get more dimension to your page. And that's where the interest comes from. I mean, I think we can all remember when we made our pages and we just put stickers on them and pictures and that was it. Well, you know, it's time to uh, put our big girl pants on and just add a little bit more dimension and a little bit more interest. And just make our, our stories a little bit more interesting. Not that, the, that they are, but to enhance the pictures that's what you want to do not make it more interesting just enhance the pictures and show your love on the page so the little light gray plaid is going to go down at the bottom there and then I'll be putting some of the hearts and uh, zip strips on the bottom on top of that so if you remember I cut the zip strip that had all the words on it, well, this is where it's getting used. So it says love and home and happy and grateful and all of those wonderful words that we want to keep in mind in our, in our homes. We want to keep love and happiness and be grateful for what we have. And um, anyway, sometimes we need reminding. So I put the little flower, or not the flower, what are those? Those are leaves. I'm putting that in place. And I'm putting a very shallow uh, 
banner flag on it uh, at each end. Just very, very shallow point. So just something to take the straight edge off. And, uh, but not my usual deeper, deeper points. And you can see that that's the, the back side of the, that whitewash paper. So, and it just adds, you know, just a little bit of interest without really interfering. You know, you're using leaves on the wreath and leaves on the, that little strip. And then you're going to, so you're kind of copying elements, and that always adds some artistic interest to um, whatever you're working on, a card or a page or a painting or your home, you know, a wall, whatever. Um, you want to add interest, and you also want to have repetitive elements. So it kind of um, enhances what's already there. Not having taken an art class, I don't really know how to explain it. But having the repeated silver glitter brings strength to the wreath. I mean, it makes you look at it a little bit stronger. And then the words are always good. And then the next thing we're going to put in place, we're going to make another little banner cut over here. And this was just to enhance... Um, the heart that's going to go on top of it. So I'm just making a little banner cut. I do like that pink, but this is mostly about gray and white. And so see the gray and white was also a repeated element. You've got the background, you've got the words, you've got the little plaid strip, and then you have a stri stripe strip. A striped banner and you know so you would think that hexagons and plaids and stripes oh my goodness that's gonna be too busy looking but look it's not it goes and I think it's because you're just using the same colors and they just kind of enhance each other and then the little heart just adds a little touch of pink just little bit of sweetness to that page and I think the page came out wonderful. I'm really, really happy with that. And I'm really glad that, um, you know, I had to pull out my heating tool. Our new heating element is different looking than the one I have. Um, looks a little bit more like a hair dryer than just a straight uh, heating element. Uh, either one works fine. Now, um, they did give us the other embellishment along with that silver shimmer trim uh, that they gave us was the silver, actually it's not just silver, it's silver and white and uh, opalescent um, sequins. And so those are just going in little uh, bits here and there to just add a little sparkle uh, to the top and did various little places on there so I'm using some of the and it it looks blue it very looks it looks very strongly blue doesn't it but it's it's a um, opalescent uh, in real life it doesn't look that blue but um, so I'm putting a silver and white one in threes and then another white and um, opalescent and silver down at the bottom so just a little a little something to add to the page so page one is done see at first I put the I tried to put the sequins on with um, a glue dot and the glue dot was really too big so I'm changing it out for my glue pen to put them on with the glue pen so that it's not quite so so obvious so the glue pen works well with the uh, little sequins um, you could also use uh, the micro dot 
glue dots uh, on the sequins and I just didn't have them handy and I did have my glue pen handy so that's another uh, type of adhesive you could use and it's actually probably easier to put the adhesive directly on the cardstock and then put your sequin on top of it <clears throat> much easier to deal with so uh, there's my page one I think it's finally done and on to the right hand page and so I've got all my pieces sorted onto this page try to keep them together but that doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect all the time and so uh, we're going to do another heat embossing element I told you each page had an element on it and uh, once again we're using the white cardstock as the backdrop for the silver tinsel uh, glitter from Ranger uh, close to my heart is now carrying the Ranger embossing powders so um, I think we've carried them actually for a long time but these uh, particular ones are really um, so I'm going to um, I'm just kind of making sure that I'm sort of in the center and this is the same wreath stamp that we used on the first page on the left hand side and once again I'm using the anti-static pouch so I don't get a whole bunch of the extraneous little um, embossing pellets uh, sticking all over with static electricity all over the cardstock so just to try to make a clearer embossing image uh, that's why I'm using the anti-static pouch and so I'm going ahead and putting the wreath in place and uh, then I'm going to use my embossing powders cover up the uh, Versamark so all the embossing powders don't stick to the Versamark pad and then I pour a generous amount of the embossing powder all over the image and so I kind of shake it around and then um, kind of I'll hit it with my finger or whatever to get all the extraneous as much of the extraneous embossing powder off that I can and because there's a little plug at the end of my tray um, which is kind of a pain to get out you have to have fingernails to get the plug out um, I'm going to empty the uh, embossing powders back into the jar so you have you would be amazed at how far the embossing powders go you use very very little when you're putting it all over you think you're using a lot but these embossing powders um, aren't very expensive and they last forever I mean you can emboss away with this stuff and you can see I still have some little pieces of the embossing pellets um, laying around so I'm just getting a little bit too close again and what you want to do is once you see the powders starting to melt they start melting very quickly and you can just kind of scoot around the whole image and they start melting it's sort of like they they reach this point and then they all kind of start melting at one time so you it's kind of it's really fun to watch but just see how shiny that is it really turned out to be such a pretty pretty image for it's very delicate for these gray papers and if you have any um, vintage photos any black and white vintage photos I personally think these papers would be wonderful with vintage photos but they're also good for anniversary photos or Valentine's Day photos or um, even probably some wedding photos uh, that would that would all work nicely on this particular 
uh, paper and layout because it has the, the grays give it a certain amount of sophistication, I think. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go by the measurements that are on my schematic up at the top there. So you're given every measurement um, from top to bottom, side to side, and uh, the papers, usually the, like these hexagons, are even going all the way across. And so if you kind of get, you know, where one is supposed to be, you can kind of use one at the other end of the paper to um, help you make sure that it's even. I'm just marking a corner here. Uh, so I know so I go back to where where I did the measuring. That's all I'm doing with with those things. Nothing spectacular. Um, so anyway, the next element that's going to go in place is the white cardstock, and that gets kind of over to the side. So there's going to be room enough for um, two three by four pictures on the stripe paper and they have the the um, white card stock and the embossing element kind of on an angle and there's going to be a four by six picture that goes on that particular piece of paper so I went ahead and put it in place and uh, then what is easy enough is to put the saffron mats for the pictures in place also. So uh, they're going to be oh probably half an inch or so over from from the edge of the striped uh, page. So once again, you can use the stripes as a means of kind of seeing that you're keeping your paper paper level. So anyway, I'm putting putting those two pieces in place, and then I'm going to um, put the picture uh, placeholders also in place and I'm realizing right here that I think I cut that one piece it looks like about a quarter or an eighth of an inch too too long so not a big deal I've got the cutter close by and I'll go and trim it down so it's the same size as the one on top and uh, fortunately I put the smaller one in place first so there we go so there's the two frames for the 3 by 4 pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 4 by 6 picture placement holder uh, there and see how much of the frame sticks out, uh, the embossed uh, wreath sticks out from from the picture. I mean it's going to be you know what a nice enhancement for you know whether it's a color picture or a black and white picture it's going to be a very pretty enhancement uh, for the picture. And so you know we've got the continuous um, light gray plaid going from one end of the scrapbook page to the other so we have the continuous elements that carry your eye from left to right or right to left you know whichever way you're looking at the pictures and uh, that's you know helps to add to the coordination of your layout each page isn't an exact duplicate of the other page but you have just a couple of um, horizontal elements that carry your eye from one page to the next so that you know that these pictures are part of this particular story and so that's what you want I mean you're using you're using imaging 
to sort of help you read pictures. And, uh, you know, so it's a very, it's a very good way of um, following a story. So even, even a child who doesn't know how to read yet, they don't have to be able to read. They can just know that, you know, my eye is following from this side to that side. And they can look at the pictures and get a sense of what's going on. So you could have little children look at these pages and see what's going on with their family. Now this element that I'm putting in place right now, this banner that's uh, essentially the title for the page, is one of the cutout elements on that paper that I showed you that had all the different elements on it. So there were things like home and hearts and banners and uh, a little house. There were various things. So this is one of those things that I cut out um, by hand. Uh, so, I mean, it was uh, not hard to do at all because you've got a nice wide um, white line to follow. So it makes it very simple. Now, these elements are also the same thing. See, you can tell because they've got the little triangle dots on the back side. So you know that that's that same paper that has all these different elements to it. And they're so pretty and, you know, add such a nice touch um, to, the, to the papers, to the gray papers. So I'm really happy. I was kind of surprised when I first, when they first started using uh, these pages that had these cut out elements on it because I thought, well, they're awfully busy to put pages, pictures on. You know, it was like, didn't quite get what was going on. And then, you know, when I realized it was, you know, elements that the paper was actually meant to be cut, it was like, oh, okay. And so uh, the elements that they have are usually really pretty. I'm not sure why they're doing this. If it's a new thing in scrapbook paper, don't know. Uh, but they are beautiful elements. And, uh, you know, it's uh, something a little bit different from it gives you more elements than just the stickers. So um, maybe this is just another way to make stickers. I don't know. Anyway, I added some more sequins to the uh, page. And once again, I used the white and silver and the opalescent. And so here we have the right and the left page. And uh, the one thing I did forget to put on these papers were the little thin quarter inch jotting uh, journaling strips. So uh, don't forget those to put those in place. I've, I'll add mine later on. So anyway, we're on to the next. Project 2 is coming up shortly. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.